telling me that uh, when you claim you a Christian, it, it doesn't matter how you look or how you act. What's wrong with you? Tyler Perry is supposed to be a Christian. If that man is a Christian, he can't be a cross-dresser at the same time. At the same time. You're aware of how the entertainment industry operates, correct? It's essentially a wild environment, constantly broadcasting people's private matters as though it's of no consequence. Some argue that the music industry tops the list for its unruliness, perhaps due to its dubious past or other reasons. Yet, the film sector is not exactly passive in comparison. And now, stirring the pot is none other than Monique. She's gearing up to reveal everything she knows about Tyler Perry. Rumor has it that she's ready to expose some significant scandals about Perry that might even surpass those associated with Diddy. Considering the infamous tales surrounding Diddy, the suggestion that Tyler Perry could be implicated in even more egregious controversies is astonishing. For those eager to learn the salacious specifics and how Tyler Perry might eclipse Diddy in notoriety, prepare for an exhilarating narrative. A few months ago, Monique took the stage at the Apollo Theater and unleashed a torrent of accusations against Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, and Oprah Winfrey, alleging various misconducts. This Academy Award-winning actress did not mince words, particularly regarding her tumultuous relationships with Perry, Daniels, and Winfrey. Monique, renowned for her role in the impactful movie Precious in 2010, has appeared in only a handful of films since then. She attributes this scarcity of roles to being ostracized from the industry. In 2015, she publicly disclosed that this trio, Daniels, Perry, and Winfrey, were instrumental in derailing her career. Daniels retorted by suggesting that Monique's expectations during the production of Precious were incompatible with industry norms, which strained their relations. Nonetheless, Monique continued to divulge information at her Apollo performance, clarifying that blackballed might not fully capture the essence of her situation. She elaborated on this notion, albeit years after the initial incident, further explaining the implications of her experiences. Yeah, I'm actually, Lee Daniels and I had a conversation and he offered me the role of Cookie. And we went back and forth with his company and our company trying to get TV quotes and all. And then we got a call, I got a call back from him because I hadn't heard where I was supposed to go and do the screen test. And that's when he said, Mama, you've been blackballed. And I said, well, why have I been blackballed? And he said, because you didn't play the game. And I said, what game is that? And he was never able to answer that question. So that's as clear as I can be, because I've been saying the same thing repeatedly. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question, baby. Let's take a step back to 2009, when Monique was preparing for a promotional tour for the film Precious, which was co-produced by Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. The buzz around her potential Oscar nomination was building, but there was a catch. They did not intend to compensate her for participating in the tour. Exhausted from the filming process, Monique chose to skip the tour to spend some downtime with her family. This decision seemed reasonable and initially appeared to be accepted by all parties involved. However, a few weeks later, a sudden shift occurred as media reports began to portray Monique as troublesome to work with. Following her Oscar win for Precious, she found herself being ostracized by the industry. Monique began to piece together that there was a deliberate effort to tarnish her reputation. In a revealing conversation with journalists, she disclosed that Lee Daniels, the director of Precious, had confessed she was blackballed for not playing the game. Monique publicly demanded apologies from both Oprah and Tyler Perry, apologies that have yet to be issued. Further complicating matters, a few months after the press tour controversy, Monique exposed an incident involving Oprah inviting her brother Gerald and her parents onto her show. Given Monique's traumatic past with her brother and her strained relationship with her parents, this move by Oprah was particularly egregious. Monique had previously shared in a 2008 interview about the abuse she suffered from her brother during childhood. She had informed Oprah that while she was comfortable with her brother's participation, she wanted no involvement herself. Nevertheless, she was blindsided by advertisements featuring her family, feeling betrayed by Oprah's lack of empathy. Despite seeking an apology, Monique received none, neither in private nor publicly. This situation is exacerbated by the close relationship between Oprah and Tyler Perry, leading some to speculate about Monique's motivations. However, many support Monique's stance, believing she is owed an apology. Monique has hinted at possessing inside information about Tyler Perry, 
which is not surprising given her long tenure in the entertainment industry. Tyler Perry, known for his success in the Atlanta theater scene and the Medea series, has not been without controversy. His journey has encountered turbulence, including allegations of an inflated ego and disputes with industry heavyweights like Oprah. Perry's transition to television, particularly with the successful sitcom House of Pain, was not without its own drama. A dispute arose over a syndication deal and a spin-off, Meet the Browns, when Perry dismissed four writers seeking union contracts. This move sparked significant backlash within the industry. Perry claimed he was handling all the writing himself, yet faced further union issues in 2015 when the Actors' Unions, SAG-AFTRA and Actors' Equity, banned members from participating in his play Medea on the Run due to his company's refusal to sign union contracts. These controversies highlight the complex dynamics within Perry's career, with some industry insiders criticizing his practices and their impact on professionals' work. So here's a story time about how filming Meet the Browns was the most stressful and hardest thing that I've ever done in my entire life. I had no idea that Tyler Perry's studio schedule was so drastic. If you're working on a regular network show, they take a whole week to film an episode. Tyler Perry Studios, they film an episode in one day. The character was Jeffrey, a fat high school teenager who was very intellectual who was getting bullied at school. I take two to three days to learn the entire script. On the day of filming, first thing we do is a table read. I know all of my lines. I'm ready to go. So the director, who is Alfonso Ribeiro Carlton in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he starts to block us, telling the actors where to go, where to stand. Mr. Perry comes in, everything changes. So we literally run the entire episode for him and he hates it. Does that mean I have to learn a whole new script? Yes, that's what it means. Mr. Perry on the spot starts rewriting the entire script and he's feeding me the lines to say and the director is kind of standing on the side like you better do it because if not they will fire you here is where the shoe hit the fan so in the middle of mr perry changing up the scenes he says you know i want jeffrey to be gay and he has a crush on his bully that's not what i auditioned for what actor and vocal coach brandon J took to tiktok to divulge his experience working on tyler perry's meet the browns describing it as the most demanding job he's ever undertaken. Jay detailed how a single day on Perry's set felt equivalent to an entire week of shooting on other projects. He highlighted Perry's notorious habit of introducing last-minute script alterations, forcing actors to quickly memorize new lines. Jay, who auditioned for the role of Jeffrey, revealed the extent of Perry's impromptu changes. He noticed Perry's dissatisfaction with the original script, leading to a frantic rush among the cast to learn entirely new lines, personally selected by Perry. Jay recounted how Perry spontaneously rewrote the entire script on set, directly feeding lines to actors. The most shocking part was Perry's zero-tolerance approach. Actors who failed to adapt rapidly faced immediate termination. Adding to the pressure, Perry unexpectedly decided to alter Jay's character's backstory, imposing a new narrative twist that Jay hadn't anticipated when he auditioned. Perry envisaged Jeffrey as a character who harbors romantic feelings towards his high school bully, a significant deviation from the original character portrayal. Jay was taken aback by this sudden change, stating, I want Jeffrey to be gay and have a crush on his bully, a concept Jay hadn't agreed to initially. Consulting his agent, Jay was reminded that he was under no obligation to accept these alterations if they made him uncomfortable. However, after considerable reflection, Jay chose to embrace the opportunity, despite the last-minute modification of his character's sexual orientation. This incident has fueled ongoing speculation about Tyler Perry, potentially projecting his own unresolved issues onto black male actors. The narrative thickens with recent allegations concerning Tyler Perry's conduct within the industry. Actor Christian Keyes amplified the controversy by posting a emotional video on Instagram in which he discusses the abuse of power prevalent in the entertainment sector. Keyes shared his distressing encounter with a prominent figure who boasted about employing multiple young black men, suggesting a pattern of exploitation. This disclosure has intensified the scrutiny surrounding Tyler Perry, raising serious concerns about his interactions with younger black male actors in the industry.